tradition of the vast diocese which comprises the whole of Northeast. His undaunted faith was soon put to test, where on 10 April 1936, Our Lady's House, which was the residence and the foundation house of the Salesian, was burnt down to ashes by the devastating fire. Still, to recover from this great loss, another guest visited him on 1st September 1939. The Second World War broke out, causing great bloodshed, untold devastation, and unthinkable disaster. Had not yet passed, and again for the second time, the Assam mission had to witness another heartbreaking moment. On 10th June 1940, Italy entered war, and the British colonial government of India decided to intern all the foreign missionaries who were from enemy's country. Thus, the Assam mission was totally unprepared for such an eventuality since most of the missionaries were from Italy. Monsignor, since Italy had joined the war, we didn't know that we have to face the consequences. Yes, Father. It's a big misery for everyone. Fifteen years had not yet passed since this mission suffered because of war. And now another tragic story begins. Who knows, this may be our turn to leave the mission. No, Father. We can't leave the mission. I believe the Madonna will not allow any unpleasant War may come and go, but we must not lose our hope, faith in God and Madonna. Yes, please come in. Good afternoon, Monsignor. Good afternoon, Father. Monsignor, have you heard the news that all the missionaries from the enemy country were ordered to be entered? For except those who have not visited their home country for 16 years or more. Majority of the missionaries here in Assam are from Italy. Who will carry out our mission? If that is the case, then. Yes, you are true. All we can do now is to pray. Pray very hard that the war may end soon and nothing may happen to us and to the people. He has best for us. Let us be patient. Yes, Monsignor. You are true. We need to pray hard.
the war was raging with all its fury, and the effect was great. Bishop Fernando, being a shepherd, saw the poverty and misery of the people. More than hundred of Assam missionaries were taken to internment camps, and the foreign sister had to reside within the limits of the convent and could not do. Bishop Fernando, who fought the First World War, would easily understand the devastation of the war would cause. The war causes him great anxiety for the welfare and the safety of the people. Who would go to remain with the people, instruct them, give them dignity when the missionaries are away?
order their rewards. But, despite their goodwill and sincerity of intention, could not be convinced that the girls had genuine desire and mature faith. They lacked educational qualifications to begin their training for religious life. Sister Regina, finding no solution to this matter, told Father Attilio Colusi, the parish priest. For Father Attilio, this was a world of news and the eye opener. He thought that Perhaps the bishop's obsession with the idea of founding the native congregation of women committed to the works of evangelization could be realized in these words. Yes, sisters. Yes, sisters. 
Bishop Stephen Brandon spent his 40 fruitful years in Northeast India. He lived a life of heroic faith, hope, and charity, and was outstanding in his simplicity of life. He always encouraged local vocations, loved local cultures, and the people. He desired to be part of the soil, but the will of God was otherwise. Politics, political and ecclesiastical events of the 20th century brought about many changes in Northeast India and in the church as well. The adjournment called for by Pope John XXIII and the Second Vatican Council touched the church in Northeast India in no small measure. One of the first persons to be affected by the new process was Bishop Ferrandi. After having spent his youthful and bigger years in Northeast India, had to leave the office of the Bishop of Shilom and leave India, the land of his toils and achievements. It was probably the most difficult fight he ever uttered in his life. On 21st September 1969, the diocese faced his father and pastor a moving farewell. Thousands of people called from different villages to have a last glimpse of Bishop Ferrari and to receive his party blessing.
the last eight years of this life in the Salishin community as Chenova Gisli. He joyfully accepted this as the will of God and decided to spend the last phase of his life in recollection, prayer, reading and writing about the wonderful works accomplished in the mission also. He considered himself as an old oak tree, still resisting the wind and storm. On 17 June 1978, some of his benefactors had come to visit him. Gain his 
consciousness anymore. He breathed his last on 20th June 1978. A stroke of apoplexy marked the end of the great missionaries. Bishop Fernando loved the idealists and his desire was not only to be one with the people, but its soil as well. God could not turn down the desire of the ones who loved him so dearly and who served him faithfully. Eventually, on 3rd December, the model of Bishop Stephen Fernando was brought back to Shiloh and entered at St. Margaret's Convent Chapel on 12 December 1987. He now lies in the sanctuary of the chapel where he often celebrated the Holy Mass. Being so close to his beloved daughters, he now lies of a life for them receive them from above to live their life of consecration faithfully. During his lifetime, he set up several works in the heart of Shillong, such as Cathedral of Mary Help of Christians, St. Paul's Seminary, and Nazareth Hospital. Most of all, his great contribution to the church was the founding of the Congregation of Missionary Sisters of Mary Help of Christians with its charism, missionary evangelization. Today, the MSMHC has 171 centers in India and 21 centers in other countries, engaging themselves with different apostolate, making Christ known to the ends of the earth.